What do you want, Steve? That's right. I think I got the flu. Maybe you'd feel better if you stopped watching television and went to bed. Maybe you'd be quiet with a steak knife in your heart. What? Just leave me alone, Steve. Believe me, you got your own problems. Good. Finally. Hello, dear. How are you today? Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. There now. See how easy it is? Things are so much better between us when you remember the paper in the morning. And let's keep him that way. I take it you wish to be initiated into the mysteries of the Order of the Harvest Moon. A bad feeling. That is something children get when the closet door is cracked open at night. Or a woman alone on a highway gets when her engine starts squealing and shaking her to her bones. A bad feeling is a little thing to deter a man. However, if you do not wish to proceed, then there is no need to continue. You are lower than dust, the chaff that must fall aside. Beware, the harvest approaches. Take it you wish to be initiated into the mysteries of the Order of the Harvest Moon. Very well. Know then that securing the application was but the first step on your road to enlightenment. Now you must complete a series of tasks to prove your worthiness as an initiate. What kind of tasks? Minor pranks, really. Nothing overly difficult. More tests of wit than prowess. But to complete them you must, if you wish to enter these walls. Minor prank, eh? I'll bet. What have you got in mind? There is in Harvest a man named Mr. Johnson. He owns a tucker. It is his pride and joy. I should like you to put a scratch in it. A scratch? That's all? As I said, a minor prank. Mind you, you are not to damage the vehicle. Merely put a single scratch in it. Once you have done so, return here, and I shall give you your next task. Did you say hello to your father for me? It's very important. Tell him. Tell him that I hope he gets better soon. And, and don't forget to remind him about his promise regarding the meat. I could use some good news right now. I just got the word. The order turned down my latest application. Looks like we'll be having the wedding at Moynihan's after all. Hello, dear. Come to see Stephanie, have you? She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Just because I'm doing housework doesn't mean I have to be a drudge. It's a wife's duty to look good for her husband at all times. What's wrong with wearing pearls, for heaven's sake? Nothing, but you look like June Cleaver. Some kind of sitcom mob. Sitcom? Jeez, you know, a situation comedy. The weird part is, I can't remember how I know that. I'm much too busy with housework to watch TV. Maybe Mr. Poston would know about sitcoms. Stephanie doesn't watch TV, though. She's grounded. Give my regards to your parents. You might want to be extra nice to Mr. Poston today, Steve. He was turned down by the lodge again. 
Guess we're having the wedding at Mr. Moynihan's after all. Give my regards to your parents. Steve, I'm so glad you came back. What have you been doing? I visited the lodge. Talked to the sergeant at arms there. He knows that there's something out of whack here. He told me if I wanted to find out what it is, I should join the lodge. I've decided to join the lodge, Stephanie. I think the answer to all our questions is inside. That place. It's so sinister. You may be playing right into their hands. Did you think of that? Doesn't it seem like you're being herded toward the lodge? That's one of the things I hope to find out. I hope finding out doesn't get you killed. Come back and visit me soon, okay?
So, you have completed your first task. Now that you've scratched the tucker, you may proceed to your second task. You will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman and bring it to me. The human mind always seeks to categorize phenomena to pigeonhole and therefore feel that it exerts control over an unfathomable universe. A feeling, however, is not a fact. Whatever you may think of the order is only speculation. A realization which should give you scant comfort considering that even memory is illusory. A chemical imprint on meat that, like what it is written upon, must one day decay. If you're interested in reviving the decaying corpse that is your memory, you'll be back. The only answer for you is here, Stephen. Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. I heard that someone took Karen, Little Miss Perfect, and get famous. Gonna get a picture on a milk carton. Yeah. Well, I heard that Karen was gone. So I went over to Miss Fitzgerald's house and asked if I could play with Karen. Her mom just stood there, you know, in the doorway and cried and cried. And I just stood there, wondering how long it would take for her to stop. But she didn't. So I went inside and watched TV, because they've got color, because Edna has money, because she runs the diner and all. And I sensed she was feeling vulnerable. So I asked her to fix me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And she did. Then I went into Karen's bedroom and looked around for stuff I could take while Edna was in the bathroom with the water running. But all that there was was girl stuff. So I came home. But it was fun while it lasted. I'm evil. You don't know what evil is. <laughs> Mom says the blood drive is coming, Steve. You'll like that. It's for a good cause. And only bad people don't get Good. Finally. Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. I heard that someone yeah. that, that. I even had to turn the crust off for me. And then I ate it anyway. 
She was crying so hard. I could have peeked into her dress if I wanted to. But hey, when a bard's got puffy eyes and a runny nose, who wants a peek at that? Good. Finally. Hello, dear. How are you today? By the way, I spoke with Mr. Johnson and he's living. Seems someone scratched up his priceless tucker. If he finds out who, they'll be heck to pay. Edna's daughter Karen has disappeared. Karen was playing outside as Edna closed the diner and that's the last anyone saw of her. I haven't the foggiest idea. All I know is she went missing last night. But Steve, this isn't something you want to be concerned with. Trust me. You should be concentrating on joining the Lodge, not some missing girl. Isn't a lost child everyone's concern? Then let everyone worry about it. This is nothing but a waste of time for you. If you spend your time in Harvest looking for Karen, you'll regret it. My time in Harvest? You talk like I'm a visitor, Mom. Don't be silly, dear. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Hello, dear. By the way, Ed. This happened Tuesday night. That's all I know except for what's on the posters. Don't forget to put the papers out for Jimmy. You know how he gets. Damn it. Swell. Here's the keys to the broom closet at Gein Memorial. That's where they meet every day. About 3.45, as soon as everyone has gone home. Sometimes I hide in there beforehand. Daddy-o, I see some stuff that's real nasty. Take it from me, you made a good swap. Wait a minute. I heard that someone... Yeah. Ed. This don't be Hey, did you ever find any sneakers? Oh, gee whiz. Look, if you find any. I'd be willing to trade you for him. Something really neato. Think about it. See you later, alligator. Hey, did you ever find any sneakers? Whoa, that's great. Maybe we could trade. What could you give me? You know Miss Whaley and Principal Harold down at the school? Well, I found out they're messing around with each other in the broom closet. I can tell you when they meet and trade you some keys that'll let you catch them red-handed. What do you say? You could watch them. I know they're pretty old and ugly and all, but it beats underwear catalogs to all get out. Besides, maybe you could scare them into paying you or something, if you took a picture of them or something. But hey, the offer's still good. Find some sneakers, and we'll talk. See you later, alligator. Hey, did you ever find any sneakers? Whoa, that's great. Maybe we could trade. What could you give me? You know Miss Whaley and Principal Harold down at the school? Swell! Here's the keys to the broom closet at Gee. See you later, alligator. Damn it, what's so hard about remembering to take out the paper? You need to wise up, pal, before I get mad. Did you say hello to your father for me? It's very important! Tell him! Tell so, what's new, Steve? 
You'll have to ask Ms. Potsdam about that. She's in the kitchen. <laughs> Someone went and scraped up Johnson's car? Can you imagine? He'd step in a bear trap and chew his own leg off rather than suffer a scratched tucker. Serves the rich bastard right, if you ask me. If it isn't my favorite son-in-law. Did you say hello to your father for me? Thank God for that, at least. So, what's new, Steve? How could anyone do something so terrible to her? You think someone took her? I think? Oh no, see, it was a kidnapping, haven't you heard? The sheriff got a ransom note. Seems someone wants to dip into Edna's larder. Too bad such a sweet little thing has to suffer. That was a terrible night. Our upstairs toilet backed up. Pete Swell came over and fixed it. My back's still sore from helping him carry his stuff up the stairs. <laughs> Someone went and scraped up Johnson's car? Can you imagine? He'd step in a bear trap and shoot. Did you say? It's so. How could anyone do? You think? I think. I'm sure I couldn't tell you, Steve. Why so interested? Word of the wise, Steve. You leave that kind of stuff to the ship. This isn't something you want to be messing with. Why not? There are better ways for you to spend your time. Have you applied to the lodge yet? There's no time like the present, believe me. You should apply. And soon. <laughs> Someone went and scraped. Hello, dear. Come to see Stephanie, have you? Why then, whatever are you here for? I'm busy making cookies for the bake sale. Why not go speak to Mr. Potsdam? Have you heard that Edna's daughter Karen has disappeared? These things happen. You just have to deal with them, step by step, one day at a time. Why, let me think. Oh, yes. That was the night our upstairs bathroom toilet backed up. Mr. Swell was kind enough to come over and fix it for us. It took most of the night. Then you and Mr. Potsdam were both home. Oh, yes. We rarely step out on weeknights. Mr. Potsdam and I just used the downstairs facilities and stayed in the rest of the night and flossed together in full sight of each other at all times. And everything was fine. Just fine. Give my regards to your parents. Hello, dear. She's upstairs. Go right on up. Just remember, she's grounded until the wedding. Have you heard that Edna's daughter... Why, I suppose it was Mr. Poston. Or maybe not. I can't remember. Please excuse me, Steve. I feel the urgent need to floss thoroughly and with abandon. You seem flustered. Not at all. Everything is fine. It's fine. Give my regards to your parents. Steve, it's so good to see you again. I get so lonely in here. I'm sorry. Want to hear what's happening out in the real world? No. I'd rather forget about Harvest for a while. Come here.
Stephanie? I feel so close to you, Steve. Like we're the only two people in Harvest. The only two real people. Do you know what I mean? Have I? This sense I have that I've known you. It's my only link to my past. Yeah. Maybe it's different than memory. Maybe we don't remember each other so much as we recall the feelings deep inside. Strong feelings. Maybe the body has its own memory. Let's find out. I want you. Make love to me. I'm sorry. I just wouldn't feel good about it now. When you're feeling less lonely, you'll agree. If you say so. My faux mother keeps me up on the latest gossip. Not like she really wants to talk to me. More like she's feeding me information. For instance, she told me that Mr. Johnson's Tucker was vandalized. That's another weird thing. Every car I've seen drive by is a Tucker. There were only 31 produced. What are the odds of that? I've always wanted a Tucker. Funny that Harvest would be full of them. Any idea who scratched the car? Johnson was really upset about it from what I hear. I understand that a little girl is missing. That's right. Her name's Karen. I heard the pod parents talking about it downstairs. When did it happen? Tuesday night. God, that was a bad night for everyone. Tuesday, our upstairs toilet backed up. As if that wasn't bad enough, Mr. Potsdam was livid. Almost irrational. Like the toilet had it in for him personally. Through the wall, I kept hearing him ask somebody named Mr. Swell whether the toilet would be fixed by dark. And when Swell said it'd take most of the night to fix, Daddy totally lost it. Swell said he'd stay all night and fix it, but that didn't seem to help. Potsdam stormed out of the house and didn't come back till next morning. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Steve. I'm sorry. No. Come here. Stephanie? I feel so close to you, Steve. Like we're the only two people in Harvest. The only two real people. Do you know what I mean? I need to feel something again. This sense I have that I've known you. It's my only link to my past. Yeah. Maybe it's different than memory. Maybe we don't remember each other so much as we recall the feelings deep inside. Strong feelings. Maybe the body has its own memory. Let's find out. I want you. Make love to me. Then take me. Now. I'm glad to see you. I feel so alone, cooped up in here. My faux mother keeps me up on the latest gossip. Not like she really wants to talk to me. More like she's feeding me information. For instance, she told me that Mr. Johnson's Tucker was vandalized. That's another weird thing. Every car I've seen drive by is a Tucker. 
There were only 31 produced. What are the odds of that? I've always wanted a tucker. Funny that Harvest would be full of them. Any idea who scratched the car? Why would you do something like that? It's part of the Lodge initiation. I see. Look, I don't know what's going on here, but getting into the Lodge is the best way to find out. By committing vandalism? Well, I guess you'll fit right in, won't you? Scratching a car is no big deal. Getting out of this mess is. Sorry. When you put it that way, I guess I was overreacting. I understand that a little girl is missing. That's right. I heard the pod parents talk Tuesday. Got through. Come back. Steve. I'm sorry. No. Come here. Stephanie? I, I this may Maybe the Let's I want you. Make love to me. Then take me. Now. I'm glad to see my I've any Why would it's I look by com It was a crime, Steve. Don't be so melodramatic about it. I've heard of worse fraternity initiations. Sorry. When you put it that way, I guess I was overreacting. I understand that a little girl is missing. That's right. I heard the Two. God three. Come back and visit me soon, okay? Some rotten some bitch scratched my car! My Tucker, my baby, my poor darling, my sweet cheeks! If I find out who did it, I'll kill him. Just kill him dead. I told that fool sheriff to beep up the patrols, but what does he care about? Nobody cares about a limp dick fat boy. Well, I'll make them care. I'll make them care! Did you hear that Karen disappeared? Just goes to show you what can happen without a man's stewardship in the house. It takes both a man and a woman to raise a child properly. Says so in the Bible. But try to convince Edna of that? Oh no. And now she's lost everything. Hmm. This might be a good time to drop in. While she's feeling... Vulnerable. Bye now. So, you have completed your first task. Now that you've scratched the tucker, you may proceed to your second task. You will steal a bolt of fabric from the fireman and bring it to me. The human mind always seeks to categorize phenomena to pigeonhole and therefore feel that it exerts control over if you're 
So, if now that you've scratched the tucker, very well then, use whatever means necessary, but bring the cloth to me here, and I shall give you your third task. Young man, we really have nothing to say to each other. I have a feeling your image shall soon adorn my slab, and I'd rather not know the face of the meat I'm slicing. You know, I seem to have misplaced a ledger. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? Yes, well, since you've seen fit to return them, I'll... Overlook your indiscretion this time. But in the future, I won't be so forgiving. I hope you haven't come to tell me about that little girl's disappearance. I find such town gossip so dreary. No doubt you find me cold, but I do not involve myself with townspeople whom I shall one day eviscerate. Do you know anything about Garen's disappearance? She vanished Tuesday night. I remember that night Mr. Potsdam harassed me with banal conversation till the wee small hours of the morning. Potsdam? What was he doing out so late? Boring me with idle talk, as I told you. He came in around eleven. We were discussing the lights in the cemetery. Potsdam had seen them as I had and investigated them. According to him, a young couple were being intimate out there. Love and death, young man. The two universal forces. The cemetery is quite an aphrodisiac, and such activity is not without precedent. Then you saw these kids yourself? No, I saw the light, but didn't investigate. Later on, Potsdam told me what he saw in exquisitely boring detail. But why would kids who were screwing use a light? Perhaps they weren't raised properly and don't know it's impolite not to turn out the lights while engaging in coitus. Who can say? I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. You can't have that, Stephen. I need it for my work. And may I say you're a rude young man for attempting to steal it. I was only going to borrow it. Indeed. And have you anything I could hold as security? Security? Like what? Money? I'm afraid that's not good enough. I need that glue for my work. You must present me with something significant if you'd have me part with it. So now ver Young man, we re you know I seem to have misplaced how strange. You're the only visitor I've had in days. Except for Mr. Potsdam on Tuesday night, that is. I can't imagine what else could have happened to it. Perhaps the dead walk again and they're hungry for literature. At any rate, should any of them show those ledgers around, they'll wish they'd stayed in their graves. I hope you haven't come to tell me about that little... Edna Fitzpatrick's child. I believe her name is 
or was, Karen. She vanished Tuesday night. I remember that night Mr. Potsdam harassed me with banal conversation till the wee small hours of the morning. Potsdam? What was he doing out so late? Boring me with idle talk, as I told you. Then... No, but why... Perhaps... I'd say it's been a pleasure, but I find the company of the living so wearisome. Strange how there's a correlation between the bums who've died and the bums you've put up at your hotel. I'm not a statistician. Neither am I, but I can tell you, the odds against that ain't so good. Hey, you may be right. A curious thing to do, snooping around old ledgers. You're an odd and resourceful young fellow. How little you understand us. Us? A slip of the tongue. We are discussing my alleged penchant for murder. Tell me, why would I kill these people only to bury them at a loss? I'll ask the questions. Or the sheriff will. And be sure and tell Dwayne Dwayne hello for me. Strange, huh? I'm not... Neither... Hey. Then you intend to leverage this nominally engaging coincidence for personal gain? What an immoral thing to do, Stephen. I'm not the one up to my ass in dead bodies. Yes, but you have an unreasoning faith in the consistency of the universe. Things can change, young man. I'll make the threats here or in the sheriff's office. And be sure and tell Dwayne Dwayne hello for me. Kiddo, you brought me any of them girly picture books? No, sorry. Oh, heck. Why should you be any different from the sheriff or Mrs. Loomis? Steve, I'd be right obliged if you could just see Claire to bring me just one of them books. Believe me, it'll be worth your time to do it. In a time, kiddo. I can't stop and chat, Steve. With Karen gone, if I stop, I think I'll lose my mind. I've got to keep busy. Busy. Excuse me. I just heard that Mr. Johnson's Tucker was vandalized. You know, though I don't like to think ill of people or take pleasure in the misfortunes of others, I'd like to think it's a comeuppance for all the times that nasty man has bothered me. Boy, the way you keep pestering me, you'd think you were feeling guilty about something. Are you? I got a report here that someone put a ding on Johnson's tucker. <laughs> as honorary as Johnson is about that old car, I suppose he had it coming. I imagine it was just some kids pulling a prank. I suppose you've heard the news about Edna's daughter Karen disappearing. I wouldn't think about it too much, if I were you. This is a serious crime, and this is no time for civilians to be nosing around playing cops and robbers. Steve, I'd give this advice to my own son, if I had one. Leave this be. This is not the kind of thing you should look into. Sow some wild oats, boy. Kick up your heels. Join the lodge. Join the lodge, Steve. 
and leave Karen to the professionals. Did you hear that McKnight was killed? Isn't that something? And you know what? Whoever did it didn't even think to look in his wall safe. <laughs> Just goes to show you. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. <laughs> Stop on by any time, Steve. Boy, I got I said Tuesday night. This is a serious crime, and this is no time for That's the most sensible thing you could do, son. Sow some wild oats, boy. Did you hear that McKnight was killed? Isn't that something? And you know what? Whoever did it didn't even think to look in his wall safe. <laughs> Just goes to show you. Accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. <laughs> Stop on by any time, Steve. Can't talk now, Buckaroo. We're on in just a sec. Karen Fitzpatrick has strayed from the corral, kids. So if any of you Buckaroos have seen her lately, give the sheriff a call and tell him what you know. Anyone who comes up with information gets an invite to Range Riders Kitty Corral. So keep those eyes peeled, cowpokes. Don't go away, there's more to come. Hello there, cowpoke. What can I do for you? From what I've heard, there were weird lights seen in the cemetery Tuesday night. Aside from that, nothing. If you hear anything, I'd be just pleased as punch if you'd let me know. The thought of something happening to that little filly? Well, it just breaks my heart. Happy trails, buckaroo! Get out, damn you! Get out now! You smug, filthy little bastard! Put that away now! Put that thing away, damn you! Well, that didn't work.
Huh? What? Screwing in the school broom closet? What will people think? Are you blackmailing us, you little shit? Calm down, Mr. Harrell. Stephen would never do that. He's a smiley bear. But we should give him a token of our appreciation for his silence. Here, Stephen, take this baseball bat. You'll find it quite useful. More than that you won't get. We don't have much money. We're educators, not janitors. Now, will you take the bat or not? Wise decision, Stephen. Take the bat, and we'll take the photo. Think about taking some of that siding off my hand, son. I'll cut you a nice price on it. Too bad about Edna's daughter going missing. That was a strange night. I remember that evening. The Potsdam's upstairs bathroom toilet backed up. I've seen folks upset about that stuff, but Mr. Potsdam was just furious. Heck. They even got a downstairs bathroom. But when I told him it'd take most of the night to fix, he stormed out of the house. Some folks are hard to figure. Nice to see you again, Steve. I can't talk now, son. I'm busy with this game. But dang it if the whole town ain't going to hell. Poor old Johnson. Defecating a work of art like that. Well, that's a sure sign that civilization is coming to an end. I heard Edna's daughter upped and disappeared Tuesday night. Yes, sir. Aliens got her for sure. All sorts of funny things went on that night. I seen three different UFOs over my fields. What's weird is they didn't carve anything. There was lights in the cemetery and Swell was busy that night too. Tell him about it, Pete. Oh, uh, he don't want to hear about Tuesday. Any time, Steve. Hello, Steve. Care to buy anything today? Okay, dear. You check back if you decide there's anything you want. I'll be happy to help you. Come back soon. Steve, you live close to Mr. Johnson. How is he taking it? Such wanton vandalism. It just breaks my heart. I'll have to send him a nice fruit basket. Though if he wants some new paint and sealant, it'll cost him. Heavens, did you hear that Karen has disappeared? I saw her playing outside the Wayward Hotel on Tuesday night. The night she vanished. Did she seem upset or afraid? Betsy, no. She was under adult supervision, so I didn't think anything of it. You mean Edna was with her? No, not Edna. A man. Or an inordinately large woman.
Steve, is that you? Come to see your poor old dad? Are you my father? Really? I don't remember you. Please! I'm not in the mood for jokes. I'm serious, why won't anyone believe me? Well, you always were a kidder, Steve. Just don't make me laugh now. Remember the stitches. My God, what has she done to you? She doesn't know you're here, does she? Does she? No, I had to break in. What the hell is going on in here? I know it's a mystery to you. The sacred things that husbands and wives do behind closed doors. Maybe we should have that special father-son talk. Especially now that you're getting... married. <sighs> but you need to be forewarned. <sighs> you need to know. What to look out for? The hobby horse and the jello! That's alright. Don't get worked up. You need your rest. Yes. Rest. But why did you come? You must have had a reason. For risking it. I need some meat. And Pat won't give me any without your signed permission. Good old dependable Pat. Here, son. Here's my signature. Take it to him, and you won't have any problem. Now go, son. Go quickly, before she comes back. Steve, is that you? Are you my- Please, I'm serious. Well, you- My god. She doesn't know you're here, does she? Does she? No, I had to break in. What the hell is going on in here? I know it's a mystery to you. The sacred things that husbands and wives do behind closed doors. Maybe we should have that special father-son talk. Especially now that you're getting... married. <laughs> but listen. I can't talk very loud. It's the tracheotomy. When a man and a woman love each other very much, they go into a room alone and shut the door and bolt it with at least three locks and prop a chair under the doorknob so no one can get in or out. Then they take off their clothes and get out a wide variety of scalpels some curved, some short, all of them sharp, and then the man climbs on the woman, and then they... With the barbed wire, they... That's all right. Don't get worked up. You need your rest. Yes, rest. But why did you come? You must have had a reason for risking it. I need some meat, and Pat won't give me any without your signed permission. Good old dependable Pat. Here, son. Here's my signature. Take it to him, and you won't have any problem. Now go, son. Go quickly, before she comes back. No! Leave that there! If any of it turns up missing... Marv, what's going on in there? Go! Go! No! Leave that there! If any of it turns up missing... Marv, what's going on in there? 
Go! Go! No! Leave that there! If any of it turns up missing... Marv, what's going on in there? Go! Go! I can't stop and chat, Steve. With Karen gone, if I stop, I think I'll lose my mind. I've got to keep busy. Busy. Excuse me. Can't talk now, Steve. I've got to hose out some entrails. What's with all the cats? This a slaughterhouse or a kennel? Oh, them? They eat the scraps, that's all. Yeah, but look at... Isn't there some kind of health department that keeps tabs on these things? Are you going to work at the health department, Steve? Or here? That's good to know. Your father will be very happy if he recovers. My point was only, you shouldn't allow animals in the food processing area, right? We don't let them get into the meat. That's unsanitary, and the health department wouldn't stand for it. There's things you don't know about the family business, but you'll learn. Don't be such a stranger, Steve, and my best to your dad. So, your father okayed the meat, huh? How's he doing? Good, good. Glad to hear it. Here's your meat, son. You run along now. A new shipment of animals has come in and it's time to start cutting. Jeez, what are you doing here? Just standing here, waiting to be drawn. You just hang out here? All the time? I'm not a person, Steve. I'm an object. You do well to remember that. A person is his job. Someday you'll understand that. And if you don't, it won't matter, because you'll be dead. Dead? Have you gotten your lodge application in yet? In that case, I have nothing more to say to you, except, perhaps, rest in peace. Still here, eh? Where else would I go, Steve? Have you gotten your lodge application in yet? Yes. Good. You may survive yet. Still here, eh? Where else would I go, Steve? Have you gotten your lodge application in yet? Yes. Good. You may survive yet. Jeez, what are you doing here? Just standing here, waiting to be drawn. You just hang out here? All the time? 
I'm not a person, Steve. Dead. Have you... Good. You may survive yet. I guess you're here to steal the bolt. I see. Well, never fear. I won't tell them you were here. That's not my job. St where yes. Good. Gee. Je you're I'm dead. Hey. Good. I not at all. That's not my job. However, since I am an object dart, and since art should be interpreted, I'll give you a clue as to where the bolt is located. Darkness gives as darkness gets, but light invoked is light shed. Okay. Oh man. Well, that didn't work. All right. Still here, eh? Where else would I go, Steve? Yes. Good. Step <laughs>